For quite some time now, Tesla has been developing a new wiring harness for their vehicles, one that would reduce the complexity, cost, and weight of the harness. In this video, I'm going to discuss why this matters, why um, a wiring harness should be something worth talking about, a simplified wiring harness, and I want to cover some details revealed in a new Tesla patent application that's related to this topic. I'm John, and this is CleanerWatt. Back in Tesla's Q1 2017 conference call, Elon Musk mentioned that they were going to reduce the wiring harness of the Model Y down to 100 meters as compared to the 1.5 kilometer wiring harness in the Model 3. That didn't end up happening and the wiring harness that's in the Model Y is still pretty similar to what is in the Model 3. However, with Tesla on the low voltage architecture side, moving from a 12 volt to 48 volt architecture for new vehicles and with this Tesla patent application that was recently published for a quote, multi-core rigid bus bar, I believe that a 100 meter wiring harness will be a reality in Tesla's next generation vehicles that will be built at Tesla's Gigafactory in Mexico. Now, when it comes to why this matters, first of all, Tesla's vehicles are full of technology. Of course, some years ago, there were not that many electrical connections in a vehicle, but as technology has increased, especially with Tesla's vehicles, more and more wires are necessary and the wiring harnesses have gotten to be very complex. When it comes to the wiring in a traditional, somewhat complex harness, copper is expensive and wiring harnesses can be heavier than you might think when you have a lot of wire connected together. And the more connections you have, that means more labor hours are needed to connect and manufacture those harnesses. In addition to that, traditional wiring harnesses are not well suited for automated manufacturing. Thus, reducing the complexity of a vehicle's wiring harness is actually a bigger deal than it might seem like. Now, while the Model Y did not end up having a 100 meter wiring harness as compared to the Model 3's 1.5 kilometer wiring harness, the Model 3's wiring harness was a big step change, a big improvement over what Tesla initially used in the Model S. Going back once again to Tesla's Q1 2017 conference call, Elon Musk made it very clear that the Model S had around a three kilometer wiring harness, whereas with the Model 3, that dropped down to 1.5 kilometers, so roughly half the length. So that is a big improvement, but dropping from 1.5 kilometers to 100 meters, that is really impressive. And I believe this is going to happen with Tesla's next generation vehicle, and that parts of this will be implemented in the wiring harness of the Tesla Cybertruck. Now this topic was a part of Tesla's Investors Day this year. At this event, David Lau had this to say about traditional wiring harnesses. These wire harnesses introduce extraordinary complications, especially in the early stages of development. When we're trying to bring up this entire system and we see that it's not working properly, we don't know whether it's a problem with the software, with the controller, the processor, any of the endpoints in this entanglement of wires. So we have to go and debug everything all at once. Now Tesla is aiming for their next generation vehicle to be manufactured at very high volumes. If Tesla is able to hit the kind of cost targets that they're aiming for, manufacturing cost targets, and that vehicle can actually be extremely affordable, especially if you factor in um, government tax credits, that vehicle is going to have an incredible amount of demand. And when it comes to building that vehicle, every process needs to be extremely efficient. And going back to Tesla's Investor Day event, Pete Bannon, referring to a traditional wiring harness, um, he made it very clear that building a traditional wiring harness requires manual processes. And he also made it clear that this manual process, quote, doesn't scale well. Beyond not scaling very well, as I mentioned previously, a traditional wiring harness is not well suited to automated manufacturing either. Pete Bannon made reference to the fact that, quote, going forward, we want to reduce the size and complexity of the harness and enable automated manufacturing. Now, later on in the video, I'm going to dive into a Tesla patent application that was recently published. 
that really dives into a key technology that I believe makes the automation side of this possible. But beyond automation, I want to talk about simplifying the wiring harness and getting it down to a much shorter length. Once again, somewhere around 100 meters in length, I believe, is still what Tesla is aiming for. One of the ways that Tesla is currently simplifying their wiring harnesses comes down to the fact that they're implementing more and more internally Tesla designed electrical controllers, which allows them to combine the functions of several controllers into one and make this system a lot more efficient. As was revealed at Tesla's Investor Day event with this slide, the Cybertruck should include somewhere around 85% of Tesla designed controllers and the next gen vehicle should have 100% Tesla designed controllers and this is as compared to off the shelf units. Now beyond the controllers, Tesla is also moving away from a 12 volt low voltage architecture to a 48 volt system. And um, this is something that Elon has wanted to do for a while, apparently, because he mentioned this even back in Tesla's Q1 2017 conference call. And he specifically mentioned, quote, and will also make changes to the vestigial voltage. So not everything's 12 volts, which is a pretty absurd number. Really, it's wrong for everything. Pete Bannon at Tesla's Investor Day event this year did make some comments about why Tesla is moving to a 48 volt system and the benefits of that. Pete mentioned, quote, the demand for power in the car has been steadily increasing to the point where we now have to have pretty large wires to drive over 200 amps of current around the car, which increases the mass and costs. With Cybertruck and all future Tesla platforms, we will be moving to 48 volts. This reduces the current needed by a factor of four, and since power loss in the harness is resistance times the square of the current, a 4x reduction in current leads to a 16x reduction in lost power while distributing energy in the car. I don't know how much power is actually lost in a Tesla vehicle with a 12 volt architecture, but a 16 times reduction in the lost power, that seems very significant and I believe it will make a difference on the efficiency of Tesla's um, electric vehicles, which are already extremely efficient. So there are a lot of benefits to moving over to a 48 volt system, including a reduction in lost power. Now, a 48 volt system, as Pete Bannon mentioned, quote, allows for smaller wires, smaller e-fuses and smaller controllers. It also allows us to make those heat sinks smaller or in many cases, remove it completely, all benefiting the car in terms of mass and weight. Now, once again, when it comes to the wiring harness of the Cybertruck, I believe that will be a half step towards Tesla's more efficient system. The Cybertruck is going to implement some of the changes to their wiring harnesses, but I believe their next gen vehicle is going to take this once again all the way based on comments. Um, from the Tesla team. Now, Pete Bannon mentioned at the Investor Day event once again, quote, the number of wires in the car is driven by the number of endpoints that need to be powered and controlled. In the past, centralized control has led for wires spanning the entire car. For the Cybertruck design, we have moved to a local controller where the wire is connected to the nearest controller and those controllers are connected over ethernet wires. Pete went on, and in this statement I'm going to read here, it sounded like Pete said delimited, but in this context, I believe the word here should be eliminated. So I've um, substituted that there. But once again, Pete Bannon said, quote, the design has eliminated most of the cross car wires in the Cybertruck, and with a next gen platform, we're going to finish the job and eliminate all of them. So once again, with the Cybertruck and the Ethernet system, that's going to simplify the wiring harness quite a bit. But with their next generation vehicle, once again, as Pete Bannon did make clear here, they're going to eliminate all the cross car wires. So that's going to be a big simplification in the wiring harness. Now, when it comes to something that will make that possible, now I want to move over to a new Tesla patent application that was recently published. And this patent application is entitled Multi-Core Rigid Bus Bar for Electric Power Distribution. And while that sounds like a mouthful, basically this patent application describes a main wiring harness slash bus bar combo, a really a dual function bus bar design that replaces traditional wiring harness braided wires with a more rigid bus bar design that really serves two functions. 
This Tesla patent application references the high assembly cost associated with a traditional braided cable wiring harness assembly. Specific details as to why the cost can be high are given, quote, typically assembling a flexible harness involves assembling parts such as multiple brackets, fastening materials, cables, connectors, clips, tape, connector seals, and housing. Cable manufacturing can also be process intensive and expensive. Furthermore, since a relatively large number of flexible braided cables can be assembled within the vehicle to interconnect the electrical components, packaging the flexible braided cables within the vehicle can be challenging. Tesla's solution to this is a bus bar wiring harness combo here. And in this patent application about that, it's written, quote, embodiments of this disclosure relate to a connectorless multi-core rigid bus bar for a power distribution system. The connectorless multi-core rigid bus bar can distribute power between a power source to one or more electrical components without using a connector. Interestingly enough, this system, this bus bar system can be used for low voltage systems and for high voltage systems. So this might actually simplify more than just the low voltage architecture of a vehicle, but it looks like it could actually improve the high voltage cables in an electric vehicle as well. This patent application also has a very bold claim written here, quote, compared to traditional flexible braided harnesses, connectorless multi-core rigid bus bars disclosed herein can provide at least an order of magnitude increase in system capability in the same packaging volume. As a reminder, when we talk about at least an order of magnitude, we're talking about a 10x improvement. So Tesla's bus bar system is at least 10 times more capable than a traditional wiring harness design. Now going back to automated manufacturing, a rigid bus bar wiring harness combo should also be highly automatable on the manufacturing end, which once again, with Tesla's next generation vehicle is going to be really important because if they're going to be able to hit manufacturing cost targets, every little bit helps and they need to remove complexity in the system. And this new design should make a big impact when it comes to the wiring harness. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. And also, I'd like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.